What's good ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What If Deku Had Solo Leveling Part 3. Now, today's part is actually going to be a bit of a short one, and to be honest, I probably could have finished this entire thing in like 30 to 40 minutes. However, I decided that I would much rather drop two videos for you guys, but shorter ones, so the, the people who have been waiting for What If Deku, or I mean, sorry, What If uh, Naruto Was Minato's Reincarnation, could finally get their fix, you know what I mean, seeing as I've only been doing My Hero for a bit. That said though, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys go on to finish this video and you guys want to watch something else, definitely consider checking that series out, seeing as it would mean a whole lot to me if you guys went on there and liked that video as well as did that for this one seeing is genuinely you guys doing that and just liking these videos helps me out so much more than you guys could ever imagine seriously like getting more likes means getting more views and getting more views makes your boy very very happy and you know keeps his pockets good because this is my full-time job anyways though ladies and gentlemen enjoy hey ross sauce it up Immediately, almost as if time itself would have stopped, we would see particles of the explosion that would have went off on Bakugo's hand straight melt off the skin on Inko's face as she would get sent flying to the floor and there would be explosion marks all over the door. Bakugo from here slams the door and would run away with a smile on his face knowing that if anything he did could have got Izuku back for what he did and got him expelled from UA, it was this, and now, now that Bakugo did this, he knows that there's no turning back. I mean, Bakugo knew it was either hero or villain, because Bakugo was going to use his quirk one way or the other. And so, with the hero school kicking him out, he has no other choice, or so he thinks. Bakugo, through doing a little bit of research, ends up finding a strange organization, the League of Villains, and so... He would involve himself with it, meeting a strange broker and ending up joining the League of Villains. And so we cut back to a scene in which Izuku, being happy that he just got to meet, you know, his idol All Might, he healed him. All Might is grateful and even tells Deku that someday soon, you know, if he ever was to want one for all and be a successor, he knows the door will be wide open for him to be that. And Izuku would tell him not to give it to him, but to give it to somebody who truly needs it, somebody quirkless, somebody who has no hope of becoming a hero, because that way we could have a true, real symbol of people, somebody with a heroic heart, you know? All Might would think about that and would realize that, you know what, that's a great idea. And so, All Might thinks on them. But for now, Izuku makes his way home. Getting off of the train, Izuku would have just this big smile on his face, and he would walk towards the direction of his apartment building. Once Izuku sees the door, and sees like the burn marks on it, he'd be like, what's going? He opens the door and immediately after opening it, his keys fall and hit the ground. Izuku doesn't think he's ever seen his body move as fast as it, as, as fast as it does, but he looks over at the body of his mother, Inko, and he notices that her face, it's completely mangled. She was blown up. And Izuku only knows one person that could have potentially used an explosion this powerful. Immediately, it would go through his mind. Did, did Bakugo do this? Izuku would think. But there's no other option. It, it had to be Bakugo, right? Izuku thinks to himself that there's no way Bakugo would have done something like this. But then he remembers the look that Bakugo had in his eyes just before he did this. And Izuku realizing that that definitely had to be it. He comes to terms with the fact that Bakugo truly did kill his mother. The feeling of sadness going over through Deku's body would finally subside, and he would realize that his mother's dead. Immediately after this, an unparalleled rage would go forth in his head, and Izuku, knowing that there's nothing he can do other than vent out this anger, Izuku decides to call the authorities, and they end up arriving. Izuku tells them everything that would have happened, and Izuku knowing that if he doesn't let go of this pent-up anger, it's going to eat him alive, 
would decide that the best thing that he could do now was level up and grind, become the hero that his mother always thought he could be and bring Bakugo to justice. Rage was completely overflowing inside of Izuku. I mean, what would you think if somebody you considered a friend killed your mother, you got home after a great day and you found something like this out? Izuku's phone would be blowing up from text by All Might, Nezu, Aizawa, and everybody would be trying to tell him, you know, like, like, like he can, he can come to UA, you know, he can stay there, you know, All Might giving him invitations to come live with him, and, you know, he's basically telling him that they'll catch whoever did this. But Izuku, he's not answering. Izuku's busy inside of a mob farm, completing quests and doing missions. As of this current moment, Izuku's stats are as follows. Let me go find it. Right, right, right. Just, just to give you guys a mini recap. Speed, 55. Strength, 43. IQ, 55. Until agility, 40. And durability, 42. Obviously, his special ability is double jump. And dash for 5 seconds would still be a thing, right? So, Izuku does have access to those things. And right now, Izuku spent that entire night just straight grinding points. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Killing mob after mob after mob. And... Izuku just doesn't feel bad. It would be a complete massacre on the side of Izuku, and he would have ended up racking up so many points that it would have been just completely unbelievable how many points Izuku would have gotten. Just in one night, Izuku from the trauma that he was feeling would have ended up racking up 50 points using his insane stats to defeat b boss from different dungeons. Izuku would have taken out so many straight up like 30 mob bosses just that one day, including all of the mob farms and all of the things that he could have done, he ends up getting 50 points in one night. Literally one night, an entire 24 hours of just not sleeping, just taking potions to restore his um stamina, and Izuku just continued going and going and going and going until the next morning at school, and when Izuku realized this, by that point, he would have already have used all of his stats. Izuku was thinking about one thing, and that thing was absolutely destroying Bakugo. If Izuku knows one thing, it's that Bakugo, Bakugo's definitely smart, and he knows the consequences of what he just did. And Izuku hopes that he runs into Bakugo very soon, because he seriously can't wait to show Bakugo what a 93 strength looks like. All 50 of those points, because Izuku wasn't in the right state of mind, would have immediately been used to try to get himself way more powerful. And now Izuku is almost maxed out when it comes to his strength, and all the other stats re basically remain the same. But Izuku just has one thing on his mind, to get back vengeance for his mother and get that shit back in blood. <laughs> but no, seriously. Izuku goes to school the next day and it would be there that Izuku would have a talk with the counselor. Izuku realizing that he truly doesn't know have anywhere to live now because he has no money and his father Hiyashi just got the news, Hisashi would decide that he can't really come back so all he can do is send Izuku money and obviously he could live by himself but All Might thinks that maybe that's not the best course of action. I mean, a kid that just had his parents die definitely needs somebody around. Hisashi and Izuku would mourn the very following day over the loss of Inko, and a funeral would be held. However, nothing would happen, and Izuku would be excused for that day. Eventually, he gets a notice of the fact that they're having the USJ event, and Bakugo at this point would have already been enrolled with the League of Villains, also getting access to a brand new quirk to make his own already powerful abilities even more powerful. The quirk being Overdrive. An ability that allows him to increase his stats twofold and make him an absolute juggernaut and beast. And that's the ability that Bakugo gets access to, thanks to, obviously, one, I mean, all for one, right? Now, because of this, Bakugo becomes a lot stronger and he would end up actually, you know, being told by all for one that he has one mission to kill All Might. Bakugo, realizing that, you know, that is his hero and once was, would think to himself that maybe villainy isn't the best thing. But then he remembers the way that All Might looked at him. The way they told him, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And, you know, he really can't find it in his heart to think that All Might's his hero anymore. Now, that spot belongs to All for One. And he's going to make sure to make him proud. Because Bakugo knows that the more quirks that he has access to, the more powerful he will be. And the easier it will be to absolutely destroy Deku. With this quirk, there's no way he'll lose to that loser, right? 
he can't have gotten that strong in such a short period of time is what Bakugo would think, but he has absolutely no idea of how powerful Izuku has gotten in just that short amount of time. And also, I have to mention, he would have also had about four more days, or to be frank, about one more week worth of just collecting points that Izuku would have used. And so, Izuku would have ended up getting a grand total of 70 points because Bro was straight grinding, but because All Might was there, you know, he spent a lot of time talking to All Might, you know, the symbol of peace. He spent a lot of time grieving his mother. He spent a lot of time, you know, obviously spending time with All Might and training with him on the outside world. And so, Izuku would have ultimately gained access to a grand total of 80 points using his absolutely new stats to just shred through the mob farms that he usually has. So now, Izuku is just rising when it comes to his abilities and stuff like that, like crazy. Putting 40 points, 40, keep that in mind, 40 points into speed, making that a 95, and 40 points into his durability, making that an 82. So now Izuku is an absolute tank. Bro is basically maxed out when it comes to his speed and strength, and when it comes to his durability, there's not a thing that Bakugo is going to be able to do to hurt him. Like you'd have to land a, 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 a literal like pierce through his like heart to kill Izuku. Like, or, or, or like shoot him in the head with a gun. Like point blank rage for Izuku to die. His durability is absolutely insane. And if he had those extra 20 points, those bullets would straight ricochet off of him like Superman. So that wouldn't work at that point. But... Essentially, what would happen is we would find ourselves on the day of the USJ, and it would be here that Kurigiri would make his presence known, immediately teleporting all of the students to different locations. And so, Izuku has a very important task, and that task is to essentially find, um, how do I put this? Um, hmm. Izuku has a very, very important task to save Mineta and Suyu, right? I had a train of thought, but I lost it. So I'm just going to continue with what I know. So he obviously saves Mineta and Suyu. And because he saves Mineta and Suyu, you know, they're safe and all that. He takes them over towards the rest of the class. And once Izuku realizes that Aizawa is currently doing like a 1v20, Izuku blitzes down there and using his newfound strength and speed alongside with his, um, with his double jump ability, he would jump on top top of the in the air actually sorry and he would come down with a massive punch that would literally leave a crate a crater in the earth and it would be Tsunade levels of strength just leaving a complete shattering crater in the earth leaving all the villains to be blown back and Izuku to look at the direction of Aizawa telling him don't stop continue Aizawa using a scarf would lunge it at one person grabbing the villain and slamming him onto the ground and Izuku continues his onslaught of trying to basically take out every villain possible suddenly Izuku hears familiar crackling in the distance and he would hear one person's voice say Deku as he comes flying in at Izuku and Izuku realizing that Bakugo was right there the guy who killed his mother would get enraged that feeling that he had just gotten over with after so much time of, you know, having to grieve and one week of just speaking with All Might who can relate to him because he lost, you know, his mentor, Anana Shimura, that feeling of just like being over it, it completely went away. It came back two times as hard and now Izuku looks straight at Bakugo as Deku showing absolutely no mercy to a Bakugo who was, keep in mind, using the two times his ability was would blitz at him, and Bakugo shoots a point-blank explosion at Deku's face, which Deku completely tanks, and then punches Bakugo square in the stomach, sending him flying through the entirety of, like, two, um, two buildings, right, that would be in the, like, building biome, and Izuku looking at Bakugo would say, you have no idea what you did, Bakugo, you killed my mother, and now you're gonna die, you're gonna die the same way she did. Bakugo wipes the blood off of his mouth and says, <laughs> whatever, nerd, it's not like you didn't take away my entire dream. You took my dream, I take something from you. That's how this world works, right? An eye for an eye. Deku. As Izuku looks at the direction of Bakugo and would say he has no idea what he's gotten himself into. Blitzing behind Bakugo, Bakugo turning around and seeing a mirror image of Izuku, just literally an after image. And then Izuku punches at Bakugo so unbelievably hard in the face that Bakugo would send crashing into the ground, shattering the ground, leaving a crater. And Izuku double jumps up into the air using his dash ability to land on top of Bakugo 
with one elbow, just bam, straight WWE type move on him. Bakugo coughs out tons of blood and would be like, <coughs> how? You know what I mean? Being like, how? You know what I mean? And Deku, just looking at the direction of Bakugo on the ground, would then start stomping him in his face, like straight stomping him with his strength. And Bakugo's face would look unrecognizable, straight bloodied and pulp. And Izuku looks at him and says that he deserves that and more. But he's lucky that he's going to spare his life and just take him to Tartarus. Bakugo spits blood and spit on Deku's face. And Deku, for good measure, punches Bakugo square in the ribs so that it's hard for Bakugo to breathe. And Bakugo feels like he's genuinely going to die. But suddenly, Izuku realizes that Aizawa this whole time that Bakugo has, and himself have been fighting... Aizawa has been literally fighting against this gigantic thing. It looks like one of the mob, the beasts from one of the mob farms that he had explored. And Izuku would blitz at it, taking out a blade that he would have unlocked from one of the dungeons, and straight slash off the head of the Nomu. And this blade has a very special ability. It can take away the regenerative properties of beings, so they can't regenerate that part. And Izuku just straight, bam, slashed off the head of the Nomu, leaving the Nomu to just spurt out blood, and Shigaraki to just stare at Izuku, who at this point was walking towards him Kuragiri opening a portal to try to help her, uh, Shigaraki and save him but Izuku was not having none of this Izuku rushes towards the direction of Shigaraki grabbing him by the throat and asking him why in the world they would attack a, an entire classroom full of future heroes is he out of his mind he would say and Shigaraki would be like be grasping at the hand of, of Deku like trying to use his decay quirk and Deku notices that you know Aizawa is using his quirk so he doesn't care whatsoever He'd be like, what's your game? Looking at his name, seeing that his quirk is decay. And Izuku would say, Azawa, don't turn your quirk off. This guy has the ability to decay me. So if he actually gets to touching me with that thing, might actually hurt a bit. And so Izuku would slam Shigaraki on the ground before then giving him one good punch in the face and turning towards Shik uh, Kuragiri, whose name would say Shirakumo above him. And the quirk would be Warp Gate. And it would also be half and half. And it would say Clouds because that's the original quirk of Shirakumo or Kuragiri, right? And so because of this, Izuku realizing that, you know, Shigaraki or Kuragiri isn't the real person that's underneath, would grab a potion that he has inside of himself, take uh, Kuragiri out and dump the potion on top of Kuragiri, leading Kuragiri to transform back to his human state and Shigaraki would go burst into tears. Just, I mean, not Shigaraki, but um, Aizawa would burst into tears, noticing that that's Shirakumo, asking how in the world that happened, and just looking at Izuku, asking what in the world just happened. Izuku says that he healed him, and he brought him back to his original state using his quirk, and Aizawa would just like thank Deku, and then suddenly, a black portal would open in the middle of the entirety of the USJ, and a man with a mask would step out, clapping before saying, looks like you took out my protege, and you took out a very promising villain as well. If I allow you to grow any stronger, then you might actually pose a threat. So, I figured that I should take you out now, before a bunch of Nomus would come out alongside All for One, and Izuku would say, You're the big boss, huh? You're the big bad. The one that All Might told me about. All for One, right? All for One would say, That's me. And Izuku would say, so you're the one responsible for this worthless sack of crap right here. This guy lifting Shigaraki up by his hair and all for one would say, I am. Before suddenly, All Might would burst through the door and looking at all for one and Izuku would get a very angry being like, no, 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 like, like don't kill Izuku. But All Might doesn't know how insanely powerful Izuku truly is at this point. And Izuku just looking at the direction of All for One tilts his head slightly before saying, You know, you might as well be a food delivery service the way you came here to die so easily. And All Might would look at Izuku and be like, Die, what are you talking about, young Midoriya? We don't. Before instantly, like before he and All for One could even react, Izuku just blitzes All for One and straight decapitates him grabbing his mask and tossing it at one of the Nomus. The Nomus blitzing in at him, throwing punches and screeching, and Izuku, seeing as they were already told to kill him, they would all rush in at Izuku, right? 
and you know izuku would just blitz at the gnome was just like tearing through them like nobody's business ever and just like just just absolutely destroy them there was literally no other way that i could have potentially put this thing izuku absolutely obliterates each and every single one of the gnomes and luckily nobody saw izuku kill off for one and you know they could probably still cover it up as him just being another gnome or something but now izuku officially has a real person that he's killed not just a mob in a dungeon but somebody real and all might thinks that this might affect izuku in some negative way in the future so he decides to keep it hidden the usj cleanup stuff would still happen just like you guys would imagine and so we would end up jumping into a situation where one week later we fast forward to izuku being talked to by all might and told or no not one week later but a couple of hours later as all might asked him why in the world he would kill him izuku says that that piece of garbage was responsible for him. His name is um, Tem Tem Temura Shimura Shimura Shigaraki uh, Shimura. I don't know, but Shigaraki's real name. He would say that, and All Might's eyes would widen up as Izuku would say, "Yeah, I made the connection myself when I was fighting him. I came to realize that this definitely, this boy was definitely related to your master, and because of him, look at what he's become. Unrecognizable." From what it sounds like your master was, she's a great person, but this guy, he doesn't deserve it. I should get rid of him now. But All Might steps in front of Izuku and says, Young man, you've done enough. 